around the block, her seventh year as a college basketball player, averaging 12 and a half points a game. They've gotten a bunch of players who have taken that step offensively this year. And with Walker out for a second straight game, she's got an ankle injury. Head coach Greg Todd has put Marissa Mackins, a very good outside shooter, into the starting lineup for the first time. Take a look at Danielle Rainey as well. She's coming off of a double-double at Northern Kentucky. Meanwhile, for Boston College, this has been the five, Eric, for over a month now, and it has been a very prolific starting five for Coach Joanna Burnaby McNamee. Yeah, we talked about Andrea Daly being moved into the starting lineup, and uh, she is certainly taking advantage of the Eagles right now, of course, without Tiana Todd, so Daly's become even more important. Off and running, good morning to you. Thanks for being with us here. ACC Network extra coverage of ACC basketball. Second chance on the opening possession for BC. And a zone defense look for Eastern Kentucky. Big reason for that zone, Eric. They want to protect inside against Maria Gekting, and that one worked very well. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of doubles, as we've talked about in the non-conference, and there's an offensive foul away from the ball on Eastern Kentucky. But trying to not let Gakdang really just take over the paint, because she has the ability to do it one-on-one -on -one in a lot of these non-conference games. Boston College coming off of a 12-point win against Albany Saturday. The game they trailed early, and their point guard, Taina Mayer, got into foul trouble in the first quarter of that game, but BC was able to withstand her absence for the remainder of the first half. Three-point shot chucked up. That's Emma Hacker back into the starting lineup. And on the run, it's Daly. Didn't hit anything, but JoJo Lacey had a second chance. A bit of a sloppy start each way. Well, one thing we are seeing from the start, though, is kind of how this game is going to play out. As there's a nice take, better defense by Wagner, but does commit the foul. Uh, how many second chance opportunities have the Eagles already gotten free offensive rebounds? So that's where BC is going to live in this game. Now, on the other side, for Greg Todd's team, for EKU, going to have to make some outside shots, try to get points that way. That was kind of the difference in that BCU Albany game last time out on Saturday for Boston College. A couple of threes kept the Great Danes in it for a while before BC pulled away. And still stuck on zeros as Rainey back rims the first free throw. You saw Coach Todd, second season, back at his alma mater. Came over from Moorhead State. Been a Kentucky guy through and through. He was the head coach before Moorhead State at Transylvania University nine years. That's in Lexington. So the first point of the game belongs to the seventh-year college athlete, Danielle Rainey. Gactang in drew two defenders, but it deflected right to Wagner. Gakdang can't hit. A third chance. How about a fourth opportunity? You called it, Eric. Offensive rebounds, bonanza, and still no points for I, BC. I mean, it, it's such a fine line, right? Because you get all these offensive rebounds, but then at some point you have to reset. And so Boston College, you're right now, uh, they officially have it at six offensive rebounds, but 0 of 8 from the floor, where Eastern Kentucky only has one attempt from the floor so far. And a traveling violation against Ariel Kirkwood. This is a game where both teams do like to run a little bit, like to play with a little bit of higher tempo. We talk about it so much with Coach Joanna Burnaby back to be about a lot of times it feels like Boston College is playing teams that play a much slower pace than them. This is one where EKU can kind of match that pace. So the fine line between playing that way, running, but also not rushing on the opportunity. You saw the resume for Coach Mack. She got her start at Eastern Kentucky. She was happy to talk to us about her years there as a grad assistant. Gekdang finally able to snap the scoreless streak for Boston College. After eight consecutive misses, she's got BC on the board. It was a more patient opportunity for Gakdang, just using her size advantage. Out of the corner and off the back rim for Rainey. And Daly with numbers, Boston College. It's a smart decision by Daly to not just kind of lead in to Mayer, who is out front, because EKU had a defender there. Gakdang again with two defenders. Boston College trying to attack this zone. They find the open shooter, Lacey. 
And that time the foul going against BC. So BC starts one for 10 in the opening three minutes of this game. You take a look at the tail of the tape. And this is an Eastern Kentucky team that scores a lot of points. 75, that's in the top 60 nationally. They like to get up shots. And this young lady dribbling the ball, Marissa Mackins, is one of the better three-point shooters statistically in the country. Yeah, and it's such a nice addition to have her back after the transfer, being able to play her second semester. There's a good three from the corner. That's Emma Hacker. Talked about how she moved back into the starting lineup today for Coach Todd. She was off the bench at Northern Kentucky in their loss on Thursday. That was the first time all year she didn't start. They had switched up their front court in that game with Hacker coming in late and, of course, the injury to Antoine Ed Walker. Turnover BC. And this is Emma Hacker, the four-year junior out of Frenchburg, Kentucky. Watch the defense kind of over-rotate. It leads Hacker open in front of the Boston College bench. And they do a nice job to convert. Well, maybe not everybody had their coffee this morning. <laughs> 11 a.m. early start. And offense at a premium here in the opening. Just about four minutes. Hacker tries another. Two in a row. Nice turnaround from about 18 feet out for Emma Hecker. That's a shot you live with in this day and age, but it was a nice take. Kind of got matched up with Gaktang, so was able to step out and take the jumper. And that time it's ripped right out of the hands of Maria Gaktang by Hacker. Yeah, really nice anticipation by Hacker to read where that pass was going. Fourth turnover against Boston College. Hacker on the interior, plus the foul. Hacker, a personal 7-0 run if she hits this free throw. Well, what a start to this game. Hacker certainly had her coffee and more. Really good cut. You see the defense kind of just holds out, and it's a, a great cut for Hacker to sneak in behind off of the screen. This is a interior player who, coming in, averages only seven points a game. She scored the last eight in the contest. Nine to two, Eastern Kentucky has the early start here against BC. It's worth noting, Boston College fell behind in a similar vein early against you, Albany, on Saturday. Down 15 to five at one point. Boston College trying to find some offense, so they brought in Kayla Lazama. But another opportunity there. Off the bench, Lazama returning after being injured the previous three games. Freshman from right here in Boston. And you also saw Ali Van Timmeren on her way to the foul line. She's been the sixth player for BC coming off the bench all season long. At Boston College would love to get Van Timmeren going a little bit. You said the traditional sixth player off. And we've seen her provide the offensive spark in years past. Now it's in there. Averaging about four points a game as an extra piece off the bench. And the lefty hits them both. Snaps that eight-point run for the Colonels. Talked about it earlier. This is the first matchup ever between these two programs. Interesting non-conference game. Eastern Kentucky is going to be at Army on Sunday. But they are coming up north here this week. Running bank shot. How about that one thrown up by Bridget Fox? Crafty move. I mean, a lot of these, really, the moves have been pretty impressive. These are not uh, high-value shots. I mean, they are difficult. Mayor for Boston College from the perimeter. The freshman able to knock it down from distance. And that's the next step for her as a point guard, to be able to take the shot when she needs to, as well as her ability to dish and to create turnovers, which she's done incredibly well in her freshman year. And now we're starting to see the scoring piece. There's the jumper for two by Danielle Rainey. All right, the caffeine from the coffee kicking in. And forcing the defense farther out. Even if it's not a three, that mid-range game has been very strong. It's had three shots, I think, from the elbow that EKU has taken advantage of, taken advantage of. They are five out of seven total from the floor. Van Timmeren kept the pivot foot. Lazama finds Daly for three. Eastern Kentucky a chance for its largest lead of the opening quarter here with any basket. 
Alice Reconati. Sophomore out of Italy turned it over. Daly anticipated and has a two on one. Daly all the way. Turning defense into offense. And that's what you have to feel like Boston College's best advantage in a game like this is. They are as good as it gets in the country at creating turnovers. Octavia Wagner, best in the nation in steals. And normally, Reconati takes care of the ball very well. That three-point shot for Mackins, that is what she does. Told you, she can light it up from long range, and Marissa Mackins hitting on her first triple attempt. Well, they're just taking advantage of a little bit of openings that the defense is presenting for Boston College and continuing to hit shots six of eight, 75% from the floor. Including six in a row, they missed their first two. To answer, Lacey! Boston College starting to heat it up as JoJo Lacey hits the triple. Now there's the confidence piece, and that's really a new feature we haven't seen, the ability to create her own shot is really impressive and gets the Eagles back within four. Well, the Colonels coming north, doing it both on the interior, Bridget Fox, and then on the outside, this is what Marissa Mackins can provide. They've hit six in a row and have a four-point lead. Three straights playing without their leading scorer and rebounder. They have hit six consecutive shots. The offense has been strong for Greg Todsky. I mean, really uh, amazing how efficiently they've shot the ball. Eagles have gotten more chances, a lot of those with offensive rebounds, but KU has taken advantage of their chances. That time, Fox met resistance in the form of Andrea Daly, and then it's thrown away by Kirkwood. Home run pass, Wagner. Got it back, and one, Dontavia Wagner counted. Well, this is a great lesson for the kids in the house, right? It's kids' day, so we should try to give some lessons. And, and the biggest thing you can do, if you fall for it once, don't fall for it again. And the Eagles didn't on that move by Bridget Fox, trying to come back with her left hand. Daly and Gakdang snuffed it out well. And then again, it's a second effort, but it counts the same as Wagner gets the bucket and the N1 opportunity. And it's almost like you could see the look on Dontavia's face as if to say, finally, she missed her first Four shots in this game. Rims out the free throw. It's a two-point Eastern Kentucky lead. I mean, for, it's still year one for someone like Dontavia Wagner in terms of her being a first or second scoring option. So you have to learn how to play in games like this where you miss the first couple of layups. You don't see it go through the basket early. And how do you still find your way to get points? That is Danielle Rainey on a quick trigger with that three-point shot. Rainey hits her second from deep. And a miss by Gakdang, rebounded by Van Timmeren, who threw it away. A lot of these have been off the dribble. You had the one in the corner that was a, a nice pass leading into the three ball for eight EKU. She can make this. Ooh. About a 27 footer there for Mackins. At that time in Mayer with the teardrop. Boston College just kind of playing volleyball with itself off the rim. And Daly misses. I mean, the Eagles now with 10 offensive rebounds. It was a good idea there by Wagner to go right back inside because there was a size advantage there with Daly. Fox releasing and hitting four three-pointers here in the opening quarter for Eastern Kentucky. It and is, the Colonels, their largest lead. It seemed like BC was kind of making a push back in and cut it to four, but hey, you responding out of the media timeout. Back-to-back -back threes for them and a turnover here. Gaktang trying to go inside. The interior player is playing catch, but Daly had that one sail over her outstretched arm. Yeah, watch the little handoff. Fox is open again, gets Gaktang gets switched on and has to step out there. And that's a situation where it's difficult for Gaktang to have to defend her against those kind of players. So a really nice job by Eastern Kentucky creating matchup advantages on the offensive end, and then they've taken advantage of those switches. Reconati had it ripped out of her hands. Taina there caused the turnover, and Wagner gets the breakaway layup. And Reconati, as we've talked about, Eric, normally she's very sure-handed, but Boston College's pressure seems to have bothered her. Yep, this is what the Eagles do, third steal of the game for Boston College. 
You see how close and tight defensively Mare is playing here, making life difficult. About a six second game clock, shot clock differential. Reconati, that time got the step, couldn't finish. And Mayer got fouled in the backcourt. And that is over the limit, five fouls. So free throws for Mayer after she caused this turnover the previous trip. And again, Boston College gonna speed you up a little bit. It can lead to getting in foul trouble. 10.9 remaining here in the first, but great defense by Mayer. And then honestly, even the second sequence, as we talked about how tight she was defensively, and then when you go on the drive late in the timer, it allows your help defense to come over and really guard the paint well. And JoJo Lacey did so to her advantage that time. A foul on Hacker. Gives Mayer two at the line, and Boston College has cut the deficit in half. Back down to four. Reconati, under 10 seconds, attacking. Mackins, that time going to the basket, into the corner, and the three-point shot, no good. Melissa Lacey, unable to hit the rim. A Boston College does score the final four, but it was Eastern Kentucky that led just about throughout. Four three boards here on a Tuesday morning in Chestnut Hill. Especially now, you're ready for Christmas anyway, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. Winter break. Start going stir crazy a little bit in the classroom. Welcome back, Josh Mauer, Eric Galanti. The fun first quarter. Second quarter begins with a traveling violation. Reconati turns it over yet again for the Colonels, which have led by as many as eight. Josh, I'm really impressed how Boston College has adjusted defensively. They've done a much better job anticipating the screens and the switches that EKU are trying to create and get those matchup advantages, which allowed so many shots earlier. It was a nice rebound there, but BC's done a better job recognizing it as that first quarter went on. Atkins, well off, and Mayer with the rebound and some momentum the other way. Pulls the trigger. And Mayer with the last four points in this game. BC is back within two. Well, Josh has kind of taken over this game here for Boston College. Seven points, four rebounds, couple of steals. Wagner finds Lozama, and she'll get two free throws. Whistle came a little bit late. Kayla Lozama back from injury today. Has a chance at the line to tie this game. You know, there are times, talk about it, with, with players who have the potential to become a star, and I think we've seen that from Taina Mayer, that sometimes you just need to dig deep and tell your team, hey, I'm going to take over this game. And it started on the defensive end. We showed you the steal at the end of the first. A couple of times, anticipating plays, making life difficult, and then at the pull-up three-pointer, that time the pull-up jumper, creating another turnover. She has really sparked this run, and Boston College has come all the way back. Eight in a row for the Eagles, dating back to the end of that first quarter. Lazama gets on the board for the first time in a while. Well, Eastern Kentucky has now turned it over seven times. Finally getting just a shot attempt off difficult. Atkins, good ball fake in the drive. Good finish. Also worth noting, the Eagles have switched to a little bit of a zone here, Josh, and that's helped defensively as well. It's been a zone the whole game for the Colonels. Mayer misses the three-point look against it. I think that zone's done what it's in, intended to do. It's take away Maria Gecting from the interior. Another steal by Wagner. And she'll get her way to the foul line. This feels pretty similar to the game on Saturday where you Albany, as we said, went up 15-5. In that game, it's a little different. In that game, it's a situation where Taina Mayer was forced out of that game in foul trouble. And the Eagles kind of just started taking the ball away out front and getting inside and some of these fast break transition looks. Similar example here. They've gotten the ball inside. BC 10 points in the paint so far, 10 fast break points. They've gotten offensive rebounds and they are back into the lead. Octavia Wagner has two steals already, including the one that set up this opportunity. And she has given BC a two-point lead. It's amazing that you could average almost four steals a game in college basketball. And that is what the NC State transfer is doing this year. She is 
Currently sixth in the country in steals per game. That one's turned over again, that time in the backcourt. I think the most impressive piece for Wagner has been she's added the offensive, not just ability, but responsibility, and has kept up the defensive play. You're really adding a lot to her plate this year. She's handled it extremely well. Well, another time in which Eastern Kentucky just gives the ball back. Nine turnovers now in the contest. BC tries to extend a 10-point run. Gakting called for pushing off. You know, you look at this, BC's in front, but Dontavia Wagner and Maria Gakting are combined three out of 11. Still been a tough shooting day overall, just 29%, but at some point when you have so many more opportunities, and the Eagles also have been extremely good at the foul line so far. It's not just about getting to the line, but you have to make those shots. So a team that was shooting under 69% at the line this year, Josh, they've started eight of nine in the game. Still looking for their first points of the quarter. Eastern Kentucky's got it. Atkins, who has transferred a couple of times in her career, finally eligible to play for Eastern Kentucky the last couple. Hacker couldn't finish off the glass. Strong rebound by Van Timmeren. And Daly that time is the one called for the offensive foul as Mackins hit the floor. Back-to-back -back possessions where you've had contact on the interior called against the BC offense. Well, they got Gakdang. I beg your pardon. That's it was back-to-back -back against her, not, not Daly on this one. Two in a row, so Gakdang forced to come out of the game with two fouls. The Eagles already had been kind of having to do it without Gakdang. Now you wonder how the defense adjusts for Eastern Kentucky with Gakdang likely on the bench for the majority of the rest of this first half. Hacker, that's how Eastern Kentucky breaks the lid here in quarter number two. And it was the player who really started them off strong, Emma Hacker. Now into double figures with 11. And Timmeron caught the lob and finishes inside. How about the delivery there from Mayer? Yeah, I really like when the Eagles go quick, get the ball inside. Don't allow Eastern Kentucky to set up that double in the paint. Wide open three, Rainey. Good look, couldn't hit it. And all BC on the glass. JoJo Lacey comes away. It's been a fun game to watch over the first about quarter and a half. High paced, a lot of offense. There that time, called for carrying. Little indecision there as to whether or not she was gonna shoot or pass. Just enough, that slight hesitation. That's all it takes sometimes. It's her first turnover. That's a huge key, by the way, of her improvement. I mean, we talked about it early on in the season. She had all of these assists, but she also had all these turnovers. And that was probably to be expected for a freshman playing 40 minutes a game at the point guard spot. But her turnover numbers have come way down, averaging under two turnovers per game over her last five, even at, still at three and a half per game on the season. So that's really improved. They rattled it out halfway home. And JoJo Lacey called on the foul. Good luck, too, for Mayer. Good looking jump shot. Faina Mayer, the national leader in minutes played. Dontavia Wagner, the national leader in steals total. One of two Division I schools. They have two players leading the country in a stat. Now, those are total minutes and total steals, not per game averages. BC's played a lot of games. This is number 13 already this season. Still pretty amazing though for a freshman, for a freshman playing at point guard. And considering she was in foul trouble in the first half on Saturday, and basically at the sit all but six minutes of the first half. Still averaging 37 minutes a game. Coach Mack told us it, it was really the first time when she had to sit against Albany 
First time she had to see her team operate without Mare on the court pretty much the whole season. They've been able to have her out there throughout the game. And she was very pleased with the way they handled it. Mare this time takes the jumper that Emma Hacker got a hand on. Yeah, JoJo Lacey deserves a lot of credit for stepping into the point guard role, playing really well and in a game that BC was trailing at that point against U Albany, but managed to come back despite not having their point guard on the floor. Putting it on the floor, Kalissa Lacey. Nice drive. A player who normally lives out at the three-point line. And Lacey, sophomore from Charleston, West Virginia, getting a couple. Well, a nice job to notice an advantage here, have a one-on-one. -on -one. Felt like EKU did a nice job getting in the basket a couple of times early, had not as much of late. But some chances at the foul line. It's an Eastern Kentucky team that traditionally has gotten to the line really well this year. They're top 25% nationally in terms of their rate of free throw attempts on the season. Empty trip. Into the game for the first time for BC, Ava McGee grabbed the defensive rebound. And the Eagles hold with a one-point lead against that Colonel zone. Mayer lets it fly. And a three again, Taina Mayer. Second from long range, and she's in double figures in the opening half. Confident-looking jump shot for the freshman from Boston. Eastern Kentucky really having a hard time finding any open looks. This time, Ariel Kirkwood took it in and had it taken away. McGee, Mayer had it knocked away, but saved by Van Timmeren. Wagner, drive and dish, Mayer, two in a row. Yes, sir! Tyena Mayer has hit three from long range. 18 to three is the run dating back to the end of the first quarter. What a job by Mayer, recognizing that the three-point shot was open and she has taken advantage and now a steal. Speaking of what a job, there's the nation's leader in steals. Dontavia Wagner picked it clean for the solo act. Ten in a row for BC, and they've got a, a nine-point lead, another turnover. Reconati had it stolen. McGee to Daly. Wagner stepping in for an offensive foul. That was a good job there by Kara Freeman to take the charge for the Colonels. But has led this BC charge 20 of the last 23 points in this game belong to the Eagles. They've got a nine point advantage. Atkins tries to end it. Hacker inside. She couldn't finish. Wagner stood her ground. And Eric, this is how this game has turned around in the last eight plus minutes. It's really been amazing. The Eagles have been started by creating turnovers, but Tyena Mayer, 10 of the 20 points during this 20 to three run for Boston College. She meets all scores with 13, with three three-pointers. Atkins got hit in the face. No whistle. Reconati has had a tough half. The Italian tries against Mayer. Atkins lets it fly. The lid is still on the basket for the Colonels. I mean, even there, Mayer got a piece of it. I know it wasn't a steal, but took EKU out of sequence on that offensive possession. Bear free to fire for two. Absolutely taking over this contest is the freshman. BC has a double digit lead. That's 15 for Mayer. And the answers are not coming. That time it was Rainey who tried it. Colonels have hit just one shot this quarter. McGee for three. But Van Timmeren fault for pushing off. Or was she fouled? I was on Van Timmeren, and BC is over the limit. It's kind of amazing if you look at the difference, even just in two games, right? 
and you look at the first half comeback that BC needed against U Albany, it was, okay, how do we do it without Ty Demare? Today, similar situation, had to come back in the first half, but it's been because of Ty Demare. Showing kind of the different ways the Eagles feel like they can win basketball games. And that ends what had become a 12-point run for BC as the seventh year college athlete, Danielle Rainey, hits the first. Deficit cut to nine. Mayor now has 12 of the 22, this 22 to five stretch. BC doing this of late with Gakdang on the bench with two. Daly sees the C part. A free rim run there for Andrea Daly. Atkins got a good look again. And she is just one of six from outside. You know, one thing that's been interesting is since the Eagles have kind of gone to this zone press, Josh, it's not that EKU hasn't been able to break it. I mean, that's a good shot. They just haven't made them. Yep. Total opposite of what we saw for about the first eight or nine minutes of the game. Wagner. She's got a two-point jump shot. Dontavia Wagner now with 10. Sorry, Josh. By the way, Eagles are shooting 53% from the floor in the second quarter after struggling early on in the game. Hacker has been the offense for Eastern. And Emma Hacker hits another three. She has hit three threes. Mayer responds. A time for the mid-range, Taina Mayer. It'll stay with the Colonels. It is already a career high for Taina Mayer. 17 points here in the first half. Six out of 10 from the floor, including three out of five from three-point range. You figure the three-point shot, Eric, that's kind of the next level of development in her game. She's hitting those with regularity. Look out, ACC. Tough shot. Kayra Freeman couldn't hit. But even whether it's a three, whether it's a two, it was great job in this first half just knowing, all right, my team needs a basket here. Let me find a way to get it. Ben Timmerin, nice pass. Wagner, front rim. And that is not going to count. Half ended before Wagner put it through the net. And it'll be a 12-point lead for Boston College heading into halftime. Quite the turnaround. It was Eastern Kentucky by eight in the first quarter, a 20-point turn going into the locker room for BC. I mean, it was a lot on the offensive end that was really impressive, but I thought that BC buckled down defensively when they needed to at the end of the first quarter and then let the offense take flight. And I mean, my goodness, Taina Mayer just the took over this game. at the end of the half was not released in time game. and is no good. Officials did take a quick look just to make sure that that last shot from Wagner came after the buzzer and they have confirmed that it did. Boston College, 42, Eastern Kentucky, 30. Got Coach Mack with us. Well, what a turnaround there. Taking trips in the summer to foreign countries. You can do it every four years at the NCAA level. It's really a special thing to kind of expose these athletes to different communities across the world. Second half underway. Glad you could be with us here as we've moved into the lunch hour. ACC Network extra coverage of ACC basketball. Turnover there. Daly threw it right to Hacker. Hacker may have gotten away with steps, but Daly erased her shot regardless. Well, whether she got away with steps or not, she did not get away with the second sort of double clutch, and Boston College was able to collapse defensively and then get the bucket at the other end. That turns into a nice little reverse there from JoJo Lacey. And the largest lead of the contest balloons to 14. Mackins finds the range for EKU. It's really a quick release from Mackins when she gets the opportunity. You know, we talk so much about transfers coming in. Mackins is the rare one that transfers in conference. So when she gets to conference play, that'll be a nice advantage for her to already be familiar with a lot of the opponents. Lacey on the miss. Take a look at this EKU team playing without its best player statistically, Antoinette Walker. Trying to win on the road against a power six opponent. Make it five in a row now for the Colonels as Ariel Kirkwood got an easy route to the hoop. 
Deficit cut under 10. Lacey, drive and dish, Gak Dang, but there's a charge on the pass, wave off the basket. And Gak Dang fell hard after putting that one in. I think she fell on that elbow. Certainly took a tough fall there. Certainly hope it's nothing more than that. Good call on the charge, I think. That yeah, was ended up Kirkwood tripping over Kirkwood going down right there. Yeah, just no defense there on the fall, but I hope she is okay. Boston College taking Gekting over to the bench there. So Ali Van Timmeren back into the game. Nine point BC lead. Atkins that time drove to the hoop. Couldn't finish with a left hand. Lazama checked in for BC as well during that last stoppage. Couple of players coming in off the bench and Kayla immediately fires. Octavia Wagner. Got the contact, shot got blocked, but Mackins with the body. Wasn't a good shooting first half for Dontavia Wagner. In fact, she started 0 for 4, but she has worked her way into double figures with a workmanlike effort. Well, that's what we talked about, right? You have to have some of these games sometimes. And it's not always going to be the high percentage game, but you're still a player who's relied upon to get certain number of points and she is already closing in on her season average uh, despite that slow start this to both boston college has missed only three free throws in this game and all three of them have come out of the hands of dontavia wagner still a nine point contest eku hanging in there at the start of the third quarter ozama draws the assignment Reconati has had a tough game with point guard Atkins, double teamed. Hacker lets it fly. Kirkwood inside. She's got the last four. And a seven point run has Eastern Kentucky trimming a deficit in half. He snuck in behind to make the play off the offensive rebound. It's the third offensive rebound of the game for Eastern Kentucky. He sees out offensive rebounding EKU 12 3. Kirkwood averages six points a game. As I mentioned, she's got their last two baskets, though. Daly against the double found Van Timmeren at the rim. Hard to get out of that trap, but that's what Andrea Daly did with that pass. Great vision to find the open player. You know it's there when the double team comes. It's just about finding it, and Daly did so well. Talked about Reconati, who is a terrific player. The point guard who's got the ball is scoreless in this game. BC has made it so tough on Alice. Kirkwood again, not that time. Good move, couldn't hit the shot. Boston College by 11 with possession. Bailey spinning. Finishing, whistle stayed silent. And a whirling dervish two for Andrea Daly. Well, you played through the whistle and Wonderful job to keep her footing enough. Slipping through the paint. Yeah, I guess the Zebras thought the pivot foot stayed planted. Atkins too strong on what was her eighth three-point attempt of this game. Pull up in the mid-range. Mayer hit that shot a few times in the first half. 11-point game, Reconati. It's almost like she heard me. Gets her first basket of the game. The native of Italy has cut the deficit back down to nine. Um, she's been held in check by Taina Mayer, playing a really tight defensive game. Got free that time. Long stretch between whistles here. See some tired players on the court at the moment. Daly finds Van Timmeren, good post position. And there was Emma Hacker. Denying the shot seven on the BC shot clock. I mean, how often do we talk about players saying you need to go straight up? And it's rare that we actually see it, but Hacker did that time extremely well. 
Just Daly slipping through. You can see she came up a little bit hobbled after this basket. I think that was a travel on second look. But she has just gone. Once she made it. Yeah, they just took her out of the game. And I think there is a bit of an injury there. You can see the limp after the hoop. She played through it for a good, what, minute, minute and a half. Pull up three, Mayer. Number four, long range for Tiana Mayer. Tiana Mayer. I beg your pardon. It's a 20-point afternoon for Tyena. And Boston College is back in front by 12. Remember, the Eagles have really gone on this run without Maria Gakdang, who's been in foul trouble. And this lineup has worked a little bit better for BC today. But remember, Gakdang got hurt early in the quarter, too. Reconati, no, off the glass. I beg your pardon, that was Hacker on the miss. The push by Mayer. Lazama had it blocked. Emma Hacker missed the shot on one end, but recovered to get the ready. Asking to schedule more early games because she has been on it from the jump. This morning into afternoon, Mayer has been electric from three, finding her shot. Whenever it's felt like Boston College has needed a bucket, Diana Mayer's found one. Wagoner missed the shot, but then got a steal. And again, it's worth noting, remember, it started on the defensive end. A couple of steals, made life difficult and then the Eagles were able to get going offensively. Well, since we've come back to live action, Wagner 0 for 2, and it remains a 12-point lead. Good news for BC, Maria Gekting back on the court. Got shaken up a bit earlier here in the quarter. She has returned as Reconati rims one out from 15. Eastern Kentucky losers of three straight. BC winners of seven out of nine. No problem for Maria, I guess. She is no worse for the wear anyways. It's amazing, Eastern Kentucky, we talked about their start, 22 points in the first quarter, Josh. They have just 17 since. It's been a complete 180 in this contest. Kayra Freeman, sophomore in in the backcourt for Coach Todd. Try it inside here with Fox, and she traveled. Bridget Fox, Detroit Mercy transfer. That is 15 turnovers against the Colonels. Coach Todd is in his second season at his alma mater as the head coach. It's an Eastern Kentucky team that's picked near the top of their new league, the Atlantic Sun. Only moved into that conference last season. Long time they were members of the Ohio Valley. Almost like it's been a roulette wheel in the last few years in college athletics. Conference changes a plenty. You haven't been in a new conference. You're the outlier at this point, right? <laughs> Gekdeng got the contact. That foul came before the shot. Oh, take your part. They'll give her a couple of free throws. Fifth out of the 13 teams preseason was EKU selected. Last season, they got to the conference quarterfinals. And this is not the full team that we're watching play here today with Antoinette Walker missing a second game in a row. I think it's worth repeating that she is in the top 20 in the country in both scoring and rebounding coming into today. So that is an absence that is very well felt. Absolutely. And, you know, we've talked about some of the pieces coming in. The transfer portal has added a new dimension to the college game. But she has taken control of what Eastern Kentucky does offensively, and it is a loss not to have her. That become the largest lead of the game for BC until that breakaway there. Good press break, and Calissa Lacey got an easy two. Her first pair of points in the game. Mayer able to answer again. She loves that spot on the court right from the mid-range. Of her 22 points, looks at at least three jumpers from just about that exact same location. Hasn't been all about the three. It's been the mid-range as well. Interesting note to what Boston College does offensively. They take a lot of mid-range jumpers from kind of the elbow out. It's not as popular in the modern game of basketball as it used to be, but if you can be efficient with it, it, it is, this has not been the highest quality three-point shooting team this year. BC is averaging less than four three-pointers made per game 
this season. They have five today, and most of that is Mayer. But they're really good in the mid-range, and they've been able to make up for the lack of a three-point shot because of it. Mayer, bounce pass, Lacey. Couldn't get it through the big arms of Emma Hacker. And now it's Kalissa Lacey running the floor, unable to finish at the rim on the other end. McGee with the rebound for BC with a lot of contact. Mayer, the pass, Lacey, the finish. But that time it's Taina Mayer distributing. Had two options, had Lacey and had Wagner. Waited till the last minute. Taina Mayer coming into the day was first in the ACC at seven assists per game. That's a clean strip on Reconati. It's Mayer again. Filling up the stat sheet. Don't do that, Don't do it. Today she's got three helpers in addition to those career-high 22 points. Lacey got away with maybe a charge, and she'll get the assist on Wagner's short jump shot. Timeout, Colonels. Boston College breaks it open to a 20-point lead. It's all Eagles as they try for win number nine on the young season. With the award-winning Geico mobile app. Test Sunday against Georgia Tech. It is a gauntlet yet again in that league. Look at this, Eric. Five of the or four of the top eight teams in the country in this week's top 25 poll. Right there in ACC play. I do think it's exciting, though, to see some new teams kind of up there in the top 10. I mean, how many years, as we talked about it, it's a blocking foul against BC. How much have we talked about Louisville being up there? Notre Dame had been there. They're back now. NC State's been there for a few years. That's still a little bit new. The fact that Virginia Tech is there, though, the fact that uh, you see some different teams. North Carolina's back in the picture. I don't think anyone's surprised with how uh, nice job Courtney Banghart did at Princeton that she's gotten North Carolina to that level. But uh, that's a big one with Georgia Tech coming the end of this week. And, and the fact that, you know, you're going to get some of these ACC teams once you're outside the top ten. Depending on where Boston College is, you got to win those games. And last year, BC won most of those games, except for the two that they didn't, the teams right around them. And that was Florida State in the regular season, and then Florida State in the tournament, which ended up probably costing the Eagles a trip to the NCAA tournament. So Georgia Tech's in a similar position. So it's an important one to try to get. So three-point play for Hacker gives her a season-high 17. And she picks up this foul in the backcourt. Little. A little bit on the uh, not set side of things for the official there. Keith Batson called a blocking foul. Her career high, by the way, for Hacker is 22. He's a four-year junior. At 1 o'clock Sunday, BC and Georgia Tech. Daly back in. It's taken away by Eastern Kentucky. A three by Rainey. Taina Mayer had it roll off that time, just outside the foul line. Whistle as Fox grabbed the rebound, and she traveled. Georgia Tech eight and two. Looks like Boston College will be nine and four coming into that game Sunday here. Lacey hits the front rim. The other thing is BC is Wagner almost had another steal. They've been in such a nice little comfortable stretch. Staying at home, they haven't had to travel. This is game number five of what will be seven straight at home. It's a stretch that lasts for about a month. I mean, it's kind of been amazing. Talking about putting together a schedule. The only two true road games, because that is an offensive foul, at Harvard right down the road, at Northeastern right down the road. And then uh, two games in Puerto Rico. And then there are certainly worse places to go than Puerto Rico for Thanksgiving. And you can see three and one since they came back from Puerto Rico. The only loss is the ACC opener against Virginia Tech, which is, as you saw, the sixth ranked team in the country this week. Final possession, Reconati to the basket. Just couldn't finish. It's been that kind of afternoon for her. Eastern Kentucky did score the final six points in that quarter. 
They've gotten it back within striking distance. 14 point lead for Boston Cup. Eagles really ratcheted up defensively. Better anticipation, creating turnovers. And by the way, they've created turnovers today without getting into foul trouble, which perhaps is most impressive. And it allowed them to stay afloat until that offense got going. That was the second foul against Zayna Mayer. That's how the fourth quarter begins. It's been a lead as large as 20 for BC. That came late in the third. Wagner almost got another steal. Instead, she picks up her third foul. I mean, Wagner is actually a pretty good example today, Josh. I mean, I think from a 10,000-foot view, our natural thought is, well, it's certainly not the best game for Dontavia. Struggled a little bit from the floor, but you look at her numbers, 12 points, 5 of 12 from the floor, 4 rebounds, 4 steals. So she's still managing to get those stats even after struggling from the floor early. That's really all you can ask for. This is Rainey on a 3. She had hit one late in the third quarter. Rainey has 11, one of two colonels in double figures. Mayer's 22, leads a pair of Eagles that have scored more than 10 points. Wagner, she's got 12. Lazama was fouled, and that shot had no chance. But the contact occurred inside the restricted circle. Yep. Right on the edge of that line. It's going one on two there. Big to have Lazama back for Boston College. The Eagles dealing with injuries. Lazama had missed a couple of games, as you said. Tiana Todd missing another game today. I mean, BC had been down to eight healthy bodies, so it's big to have Lazama back, and, and she's going to get some opportunity and some run here. Tiana Todd's out her fourth straight game. She had been averaging 11 points, one of the team's leading scorers. Marissa Mackins driving dish. Reconati finding Hacker. She's been the player of the day for Eastern Kentucky and had that one just spill off the iron. Pull up, pull up. Oh, just over a minute into the fourth quarter, Daly hit and foul. Contact from Ariel Kirkwood. Andrea Daly forcing the issue. You know, we talked early about the step that Daly has taken, and even a day like today, nine rebounds despite only having six points. But Coach Mack made the change to put Daly in the starting lineup and have Tiana Todd come off the bench. And it, it really benefited both players, and it's allowed Boston College to go on a run here. Look at where BC is. I know there's technically one more non-conference game against Central Connecticut. Next week, the Eagles go back in a conference play against Georgia Tech, as we talked about. But really, since that Ohio State game, who, by the way, Ohio State is, has been the top five team in the last few weeks in the country. They have really gone on a nice run here. The loss to Stephen F. Austin, but other than that, the only loss is to a top 10 Virginia Tech team. I have to feel like they have some confidence going into this ACC schedule. In maybe a way that when you watch BC play Harvard and watch BC play Ohio State a little bit earlier this year, you might not have come away with that same conclusion at that point. After Daly one out of two, an offensive foul. That was an illegal screen called against Hecker. We're talking about Andrea Daly. She had scored in double figures each of the first four games of this homestand. And now she's up to seven here this afternoon. Chance to make it five in a row with at least 10 points. Good delivery. Wagner finding Gekdang right at the rim. She does so much of her scoring at this time of the game. It really is amazing how the difference in her first half versus second half scoring over the last few games. And, you know, today it's a little more foul trouble based. And as you said, she took a little bit of a hard fall and, and was on the bench for a bit. But, you know, as we said, sometimes in these games, she's getting double teamed, sometimes she's even getting triple teamed. It's a different game than sometimes in the ACC, and I think the Virginia Tech game's a great example. I mean, she's playing against Elizabeth Kitley, who's one of the best players in the country. They're missing, but Wagner cleans it up after the scrum for the rebound ball found her right at the rim. Yeah, really good job continuing that possession out for BC, but to finish on Gakdang, as good as Kitley is, it's still just one player versus going against two, going against three, and having to kind of 
hang in over the course of a ball game. Looks like she's even gonna pull off some late points once again here. Almost another pilfer there, meanwhile, for Taina Mayer. Coming into this game, it was an interesting point guard matchup with Alice Reconati going up against the rookie mayor. And it has been a one-sided matchup decisively. It's a jumper for two that splashes in for Bridget Fox. Eighteen point game. Gekdeng threw a couple of defenders had it tipped. Lacey somehow got it through to Wagner. And that's going against Bridget Fox and Gekdeng ultimately able to keep the possession alive for Boston College. She'll get a breast. When you have one on one with Gekdeng, she is tough to stop. That's why we've been talking about a lot of teams have doubled. Great example on the rebound. Acting just overmatches the opponent. That was Boston College's 16th offensive rebound. And again, looking for three pointer number five. Mayer couldn't find the range, but Van Timmeren make it 17 offensive boards in the game. Kind of knew it. We could see that right from our angle. And she was leaning Fisk esque to try to bring that ball back towards the hoop. Huh. Shot clock down to four. Bear tries it again. This side. Flying in is JoJo Lacey. So Boston College has, what, four offensive rebounds on this possession alone. Eastern Kentucky stole. just can't get the ball back. Lacey stole a rebound from her old teammate that time. Lazama was in perfect position and a little miscommunication, but it ended up working out okay. Van Timmeren on the spin cycle. Counted and the foul. Allie Van Timmeren puts one in to make the lead 20. They had so many chances on this trip down the court. And finally, one able to drop for BC. Nice job working in the paint. We've seen Van Timmeren's ability to step out at times. She hasn't had the three-point shot this year, but let's work in the paint. Get that bucket. It was, by the way, four offensive rebounds, Eric, on that last trip for Boston College. It's kind of the way the game started in the first quarter, but BC just couldn't hit anything. They missed their first eight shots. And look at what they've done on the glass total here today. So when you, I mean, consider a 41% from the floor, considering they missed the first eight, it's actually turned into a pretty efficient shooting day. Atkins couldn't hit, but this time the foul is going against BC, Van Timmeren. Marissa Mackins is two out of 11. She is in her just second game back after not playing in a contest for 21 months. Transferred mid-season. Came from North Florida to Eastern Kentucky and didn't play at all last year and not for the first semester of this. But again, I, I think that experience of playing in the league will help make that adjustment a little bit easier when you come in mid-semester, having that A-Sun experience with North Florida. She started her career at Temple, so she's at her third different school. Ava McGee, finding Lacey for three. Shot's not falling here in the fourth for Boston College. And it's going back to Eastern Kentucky. This is a long winding road for Marissa Mackins. This was what she did when she finally got to get onto the court for a game with her new school, Eastern Kentucky. Made four out of eight from long range last Thursday. And it's doubly tough coming in without your top scorer. So now all of a sudden you feel like you have to be that top scoring threat versus you know what she could be as a shooter as sort of a yin and yang with Walker. That time she drew the contact. When we talked to Coach McNamee before the game today, as you take a look at the injured Antoinette Walker, who's been a double-double machine this year after transferring from Marquette. But 
Coach Mack said that uh, she really, in watching film on Marissa Mackins, was reminded of Michaela Dickens, played at Boston College, of course, so well for the last four years. Certainly that quick release off the dribble from three. It could be a volume score. And you think that maybe the two out of 11, a lot of that could be due to rust. Shots that she'll make once she gets more game action under her belt. Allie Collett, first time coming onto the court today. Reserve, who has scored four points a game this year. Mayer leading the break. Fouled on a shot that didn't drop. Taina a chance to add on to her career high 22 point total from the charity strike. Boy, you can see the eyes light up as she saw a numbers advantage here coming down the floor. It's a great job by Lacey to go over top of the press. And that's one with Mayer. Ended up drawing the foul, so it works out. The defender slipped over after she read that the pass was not to come. And that is it for Bridget Fox. Fouling out. Good day's work, though, for Fox with those nine points. She had started the previous five games before Coach Todd shuffled things up. The starting lineup today. One for two. Point number 23 on the afternoon. Eastern Kentucky, as we've talked about, will finish out this five-game road stretch at Army on Sunday. Mackins bottled up. Mayer with a bullet pass. Wagner tried to save it. A little too hot to handle for Dontavia Wagner. You would think they're going to head back to Kentucky after this game. Long time between Tuesday and a Sunday 1 o'clock tip-off at Army. Yeah, probably one or two days too many to hang out here in the Northeast, but always special when you get to go up to West Point. Wagner almost had that. Kept it in bounds on the sideline right in front of us, but then back into the hands of Emma Hacker. And a foul on Lacey. Timeout on the floor. 440 to go here in the fourth quarter. The Eagles defense has been outstanding. We give it to you as close as you can get for the action with BC Update. Came late this weekend. Would you define it as conversational or just a dusting? I'd go with the latter. Right. Dusting here. I mean, we're talking about it. It was a Quick but noticeable snowfall. Emma Hacker, a couple of free throws. 19 points. Just three away from a career high, and by far and away leading the Colonels here this afternoon is Hacker. Yeah, she's played really well and deserves a lot of credit. Again, when your top score is out, you got to make up those points somewhere. I mean, everyone can't just be on their regular averages, otherwise. You know, you're just behind the eight ball to begin. And Hacker's done a really good job, especially early, but especially as this game has gone on. And we've talked about the series of runs that Boston College has been on at different times since the first quarter. But Hacker's still managed to hang in there and find ways to get her points. Meanwhile, a rare mistake today for Taina Mayer, her third turnover. 15 point game, four and a half minutes remain. Here is Hacker. This time puts it on the floor. Got around McGee. Couldn't finish. Gekdang came to help. And it's Maria Gekdang with the defensive rebound. But this win, Boston College will be 8-2 and two in the last 10 games it's played. Taking care of business here today after a tough start. Just joining us, Eastern Kentucky led by eight points late in that first quarter. Kirkwood thought about it, now does take it. Not her shot. And add a rebound on to Taina Mayer's totals. I think you have to feel a good level of confidence in the way that the Eagles have 
found different ways to win games over the last month during that stretch that you talked about. Daly with a step. Tried to feed it through traffic, though, and that got stolen. Reconati finds the streaking Rainey to the basket. Timeout by EKU. Still with a pulse, 13-point game. Just under three and a half minutes still to go here at BC. Did you know one of Nissan's EVs survived the North? The effort at the other end and then turned over again here. So uh, EKU still showing a little bit of life here. Because they've turned it over five times in the last two minutes. And it's given right back by the Colonels, Ali Collins. And this game is not quite yet put to bed. A lead that's been as large as 20, though, for Boston College. Gekteng threw it out. Lazama onto the baseline for Wagner. Gekteng finds Lacey. It's a good ball movement, ends up in a Lazama two. And a travel. Boy, Kara Freeman collided with her own teammate there in the backcourt. And it's been that kind of afternoon for the Colonels. Yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, we talk about signs of life. Tough turnover to take at that moment, which will give Boston College another opportunity. Eastern Kentucky is outscoring BC in the fourth quarter, 10-9. to nine. It's not been the greatest close thus far for Coach McNamee. There is a way to close. Maria Gekting, and when they need a bucket in the fourth quarter, she is the go-to person. I mean, once again today, amazing how she's come to life in the second half when the Eagles have certainly needed it. Ariel Kirkwood took it to Gekting. Do that at your own peril. She got the shot off. BC the rebound, and Van Timmeren lets it fly. Rebound Lacey. And BC is back in front by 17. I don't know how it missed. I mean, that was halfway down and around and back halfway down again for Van Timmeren. Coach Mackey was trying to encourage her, hey, that's a good shot. And the Eagles are trying to find that shooting touch again from Van Timmeren from deep this year. Atkins, right? And Lacey for two. And Van Timmeren has made only one three-pointer this season. There. Minute 40 to go as Kirkwood grabs a rebound for the Colonels. Another one, the fourth three-point make of the day for Emma Hacker, who has tied her career high. That's her 22nd point. And you've got a 12-point game with a timeout being called by the Colonels. As you said, a little tough closing out here for Boston College. On the Gakdang front, as we're talking about, so that's 10 points today, eight of them here in the second half, so once again. And then here, it's a good look. Just didn't go down, but a good job to find the offensive rebound. That is in the theme for Boston College, 20 offensive rebounds in the game today compared to just four on the offensive glass. But you look at it, 20 offensive rebounds, but just 13 second chance points for Boston College. So. Uh, Coach Mack will look to clean up some of the efficiency on some of those opportunities like we've talked about. And there was that fourth three-point make for Emma Hacker. Career-high matching 22 points for the four-year junior. Full-court press, trailing by 12. There, riding with Ali Collett on her, got it up to Gaktang, right at the rim for two. That probably just about does it. It might have even fouled for Eastern Kentucky. The Eagles have struggled at the line. I mean, we talked about early they were eight of nine, but I mean, they're just four for their last 11 at the foul line. So Eastern Kentucky can find a basket here. You wonder if you just kind of foul and see if you can play it out. They did find it. They'll call their final timeout after Kirkwood hits the three that makes the deficit 11. I mean, I would, I know it's 11 with a minute left. It's certainly not likely. I mean, maybe if you're a Maryland fan, you've seen something like this happen before, but otherwise, you know, 10 or 11 in a minute, unlikely. But I mean, I would 
Guard the inbound like crazy here. Foul, maybe you can find something. It's another really good look late in this game. EKU deserves a lot of credit for playing That's it out now. down the stretch. That's now 18 fourth quarter points. A lot of them coming in the final minutes for the Colonels. Trailed by as many as 20 in this game. Yeah, BC, remember, had their largest lead earlier in this fourth quarter. It was 61 to 41 in favor of Boston College at one point. I should say at the end of the third quarter, 61-41. So since that point, 24-15 run over the last 10 minutes for EKU. Alice Reconati, three-year sophomore out of Italy, has had a tough day for the Colonels trying to run the show. Only two points, and the biggest thing from Reconati that would stand out if you look at her stat line, six turnovers. And again, Taina Merritt serves most of the credit for that. This time, the pressure beaten by the Eagles. See if Eastern Kentucky elects to foul. Van Timmeren. Not given up yet, and now they'll just play it out defensively. So this game is over. The question is the final score. Mayer working on a career-high 23. Wagner beats the shot clock. Couldn't hit it. And the Colonel's a chance to get it under double figures. Riccanati made a nice move to the basket. Could not hit. She's going to get on a plane back to Kentucky and think, boy, it was just that kind of day up in Boston. Well, BC turned it on. A tough start on a morning tip. Turned into a big effort in the middle quarters, and Boston College is 9-4. and four. Back into ACC play against Georgia Tech on Sunday, following consecutive non-conference wins. 11-point victory today in their first ever meeting with Eastern Kentucky. I mean, it was, again, not for lack of a game challenge from this Eastern Kentucky team especially early on, as you talked about, second game in a row that a non-conference opponent has come in and played really well early, forced the Eagles behind the eight ball. But BC did a nice job, again, in different ways. On Saturday, it was without Tainamere. 